Alright guys, how's it going? We're back with some more Star Citizen. Uh, this one I think I'm going to... I'm actually going to show you this right now. While I tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's so smart. Uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is try and get the basic flight training thing done. Because I've been trying to do it recently with the whole task and the, the controls are a little bit messed up. And... Uh, <laughs> Even the keyboard controls get a little bit messed up. For some reason, it's only right at the very start, though. What are these? Some kind of sleeping pods or something? I don't know. Uh, so, I'm going to go into that. And basically just go through. Yeah, I'm basically just going to go through. <laughs> it's just so damn cool. Uh... Through the basic flight tutorial, uh, just to, just so you can see a little bit of combat and stuff, taking off and landing, it's very much uh, alpha, yeah, and you're gonna notice that. But it will at least give you some kind of idea of you know what's going on. So, I'm also gonna begin over stuff like keybinds. Just my thoughts on it because one of the hardest things, yeah, you basically select basic flight training from here, yeah, and. You can actually go through which part you want to do, which might come in handy for me because it is slightly buggy, yeah? We'll just start off at the takeoff though, right from the start. Yeah, what I was going to say about keybinds is it's really difficult to get this thing right and I'm trying to get it right from the start because I kind of think maybe I made a few errors when I was playing Elite regarding my keybind choices. If not errors, then maybe, maybe it wasn't 100% optimal, yeah? <laughs> and somebody like me will go nuts until he finds the best setup. Right, so here we go. Right, so WASD, we, we know this one well enough, so just walk towards him. I'm Lucas Baravsko, but everyone knows me as Gilly. I've served in six squadrons and qualified on almost a dozen ships. So if you put in the time, I'll get you on the path to dogfighting with the best of them. We're gonna set you up in the ship on the landing pad to your right. Hustle over and let's get going. Right, so shaft. Holding down shaft makes you run. It's pretty smart in here. Really hard on graphics though. <laughs> right, so when you're within reach and looking in the direction of an interactable object, press F basically, yeah? So, this is gonna open up. When you see the use thing, basically, yeah, press F. It's really smart when you get into your craft, yeah. Alright, first things first. Take a look around your cockpit and familiarize yourself with the layout. It's imperative to quickly find and access specific controls. Last thing you want to be doing in a scrap is bringing up the instructions. Right, so you've got a free look mode. When using a mouse, your view will be locked as this controls the steering of your ship. You can toggle free look with left control and tab. That's a bit... I, I dislike using two keys to do one thing, yeah? Left control and tab. Also, something like free look it's one of those things you really would like to have on head tracking, yeah, like track IR or, or something like that, but I don't have it. So let's just keep this at left control and tab right now anyway. You'll notice the majority of your systems are disabled. I'll be controlling when they're on and offline to simulate potential scenarios and combat situations. Let's get ready for takeoff. I'll do this step by step to show you how it's done. Look over at me and watch what I do. Systems, check. Engines check. Tower, permission for launch. Cleared for launch. Copy that, Tower. All right, first I want to lift vertically until I'm just clear of the landing pad. Right, so there he is. Now that I'm clear, I can straight forward onto the taxiway. Now I square my ship up with the ceiling doors, ready for a vertical takeoff. Okay. 
Once you're aligned, the tower will open the doors. Seems simple enough. This bit takes a little while, yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to edit this part. Overall, it takes a good couple of minutes for him to get out there, because when this is closed... That's it. Once I clear out, it'll be your turn. The one above it opens, yeah, there's two of these. But the one at the top doesn't open until the bottom one's closed again. Makes sense, yeah? Right, so you can toggle off with the left control and tab as well. Ready? I'm enabling your systems. We'll monitor your progress from up here. Right, so when taking off from a governed landing zone, you should request permission by pressing the middle mouse button. You can take off without permission by simply strafing up, but you may incur penalties. <laughs> okay. Right, so there are two takeoff modes. You will begin in manual mode. To automate the entire takeoff procedure, engage the automated mode with M. This is disabled for basic training, <laughs> as you may expect. <laughs> Right, so once clear of the landing zone and hangar, the landing system will disengage and you'll regain full control of your ship. Right, so I'm going to request to leave by pressing the middle mouse button. Now something happened in my HUD. Right, now strafing. Strafing is moving your ship using only your manoeuvring thrusters. To strafe up hold R, down F, left Q and right E. To strafe forward hold left control and W and batters left control and S. So Q, E, R, F. I'm not massively keen on any of those to be honest. I'm not sure if strafing is better off in your WASD or or what, but I'm just going to stick with what it is right now and see how comfortable or not it is. Right, so I'm going to be strafing up using the R key. Nice. You're clear of the path. Okay, <laughs> now straight forward onto the taxiway. If you need it, the tower should have lit up your path. Make sure you don't pitch or roll. It'll be tough to get back into proper alignment. Right, mouse is pretty bizarre. There's like a massive dead zone, and then it is so really fast. The tower will open the doors once you're lined up. Right, so we're gonna go forward with what was it? Control W. Yeah. The mouse controls are utterly bizarre. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is the weirdest thing. <laughs> Whoops, don't want to do that. I'm just going to kind of gently nudge myself along here. You're lined up. Right, now that I'm lined up, you can see it opening above me. Whoops. Yeah, this mouse is kind of bizarre. So what I'm going to do is, in controls options, mouse, you want to change this. Flight movement sensitivity. I'm going to put it down to 0.12 and you see that pitch and yaw go to 0.12. So that's going to slow it down a bit. There's still a slight annoyance with the massive dead zone. So it takes you, you know, you need to move an inch before it actually starts moving. It's utterly strange. I mean, I would like a dead zone on the mouse, but not one that big. And you can't change it in the options from what I can see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can see why people say that they struggle to use the, the mouse in this. It seems worse in here and not quite so bad once you get out, though. Right, so we're gonna strafe up. I'm a little bit close, I think. Let's pull back a bit. And control and desk to pull back or to strafe back. I'm gonna strafe up. Alignment's looking solid. Hold. Now, like I said, the roof above me should be opening. Should be. Yeah, there we go. Now, normally you would just... I mean, you wouldn't normally be looking up there, yeah? <laughs> it just kind of makes you kind of lose it a bit. So, if you just sort of stay where you are when he says hold and then just strafe up again. That's a good line, Great job. 
I haven't seen many pull one off on the first try. I've just enabled your targeting system. It's not really my first try though, is it? Use it to target me. Right, so target friendly. To cycle the focus of your targeting system through friendly radar contacts, press Y. Dislike that one a lot. There's going to be a massive amount of keybinds in this though, so... <laughs> you maybe find that you're using keys that you really don't like. Stuff like this, I'm probably going to voice attack. This is a game that voice attack was made for. But right now, I'm going to stick with the keybinds that it gives me, so I'm going to press Y. When pursuing a target, you'll want to keep your speed as close to theirs as possible. Give it a shot. Make sure I've targeted and hit match speed. Right, so match speed. When behind a target, you can match the speed by pressing M. When behind a target, though, this allows you to pursue a target without worrying about overshooting. That's something that seems, like, really important. But we'll see just how important it is. Maybe not in this episode, but something that allows you to match the speed once you're behind. Seems pretty powerful, yeah? Now you can see I highlighted them on the right hand side there, or on the right of my HUD. So I'm going to press M. Great, you're locked on. Right. Remember, this is an autopilot, so you still have to steer. But you'll notice that once you're locked, your computer will continue to monitor my speed and adjust. It doesn't matter if I speed up slowly or stop fast. Yeah, so it's just keeping the speed, yeah? I'm the one moving, no, left and right. Moving on. Now this is my favourite part of training. The axial roll. <laughs> so much fun. Rolling is a great way to orient your ship to fit through tight gaps or evade incoming fire. Now you give it a go. Right, so rolling is going to be A and D. I can't decide if I want to keep that there or not because A and D are my favourite left and right keys on the keyboard, like with most people. So maybe a strafe left and right are better. It might be a smart idea to put those there rather than at Q and D. You're going to be using those four, but the ones you're using most often or the ones that are actually most useful, I would put at A and D. So we'll see how this goes. Right, so I'm going to roll with A, roll left and D. Nice and simple. Nice one. Well, you seem to be able to handle your ship, so let's see if you can handle a bit of combat. Right, so to increase the power to the main thrusters, you can throttle up holding W. Throttling down will reduce your power to the main thrusters. You can also quickly toggle between 0 and 100% throttle by pressing backspace, or double tap S for 0% throttle and double tap W. <laughs> Try saying that after a few pints. <laughs> double tap W <laughs> to go to 100%. So I'm going to double tap it to 100%. There we go. Should have a contact. Don't worry. It's just a training drone. It handles just like the real thing, but its weapons are less than lethal. Saying that, they still pack a punch, so try not to take any hits if you don't have to. Use your targeting system to quickly target the closest enemy. To focus your targeting system on the nearest enemy radar contact, press C. Hmm, again C, that's a good key, but you do need to target your enemies, yeah, before you can shoot at them. Okay, so let's stick with C. Okay, now look at the top right of your hut. Yep. You should see the target displayed. This will show real-time damage, shield status, and a few other things. Shields are drawn as panels floating around the ship. They'll shrink as they weaken until they disappear completely. At that point, your shots will hit the hull and cause lasting damage. So your shields will protect the hull of your ship from damage from energy projectiles and absorb some of the energy from ballistic projectiles, okay. If they absorb more energy than they can dissipate, they will overload and go down for a short time, leaving your ship exposed, okay. So it's important to monitor the states of your shields. My ship has got four, so four aft, port and starboard. So you don't just have the one shield, yeah, you've got shield directions or shield arcs or whatever, yeah, you want to call it. And you can actually rotate your shields around. This is when you realise that the, the complexity of the flight mode on this and the combat model is sort of on a different level, yeah, when you can do stuff like rotate shields around your ship. Now your 
Weapons are online. Line up your target and fire when you're ready. So it's what you'd expect. Weapon group one is one on the mouse, or button one on the mouse, and weapon group two is the right button. Group one's a ballistic weapon, and group two is a pair of energy weapons. Good shot. See a shield's weakening on your hut? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't like that. What are you waiting for? Go finish it off. Now you have a target. You'll have extra aim reticules. Those are predicted impact points or pips. They'll show you where to shoot to hit a moving target. Notice you have multiple pips with varying lag. Each of those Shields indicates a weapon on your ship. The computer's trying to compensate for the varying speeds between your ballistic and energy projectiles. I've actually set this up so that the targeting system goes ahead of the ship. And that means that I need to aim ahead of the ship, yeah, in order to hit it. So that's just what this little diamond and square that you can see. You're taking hits. Check your HUD for shield and damage status. The square and diamond, yeah, that's my two weapons. So my lasers is a square, yeah? What the hell's wrong with you? It can get a little bit annoying this tutorial, yeah, because the voice is sort of, he talks non-stop. You see how it's working, yeah? I'm aiming at the, the square. Now what I was going to say was, you actually start off, this flight lead pip reticle, that starts at no. However, I changed it to yes. I'm going to show you what no looks like. Now you see, I now need to put put it onto the actual ship itself, rather than trying to rather than trying to aim at the the square and the diamond. I want to put the square and the diamond onto the ship. It may actually be better that way. Right, so missile locking, one of two. You can only lock missiles on the focus of your targeting system. Different missiles have different lock-on times and requirements, but as a general rule, with the target in front of your ship, press the middle button. That gets your lock. The enemy ship will receive a warning tone to signal that a ship is attempting to lock on, okay? And you can lock multiple missiles by pressing the middle button multiple times. Right, so dumb fire missiles need no lock and fire instantly, but they've got no tracking capability. Heat-seeking missiles require the target to remain in front of the ship for an amount of time dictated by several factors including your distance from the target and their infrared emissions, right? Basically speaking, the further away you are, the harder it is for a missile to track. So basically, middle mouse button to, to lock, middle mouse button to lock more missiles, and then hold down the middle mouse button to fire them. So keep your target in front of you long enough to lock on. Launch! Launch! You have a lock. Fire! There they go. Kind of far away, I think, though. Not hugely keen on the middle mouse button, to be honest. Come on, myself. Now what I'm going to do though, <laughs> is put this reticle back. I think I do prefer aiming at the actual squares itself. There he goes. Good kill. On me, rookie. Yeah, so he says on me, so again it would be T key, or is it Y? Y to select him. Nice graphics here. On me, let's go. And you can press M again once you're nearby. Uh oh. Looks like you had a friend. Take a look in your review camera. Right, so the period key on the keyboard to look back, but you need to hold it down. He's got locked. Missiles incoming. Watch it, rookie. That hit took out your weapons. You'll have to hold out till they come back. Countermeasures are still online. Use them. Right, so when a missile is locked onto your ship, you can attempt to break it by using a countermeasure. So to fire a countermeasure, you press Z 
and the chaff explodes into an expanding cloud of tiny filaments designed to confuse radar systems and break the lock of missiles. You can cycle the type of countermeasure armed by pressing X. Okay, so Z fires X changes it. Last missile was heat seeking, so equip your flares. Helpful tip, don't boost after dropping one. Boosted thrusters are much hotter than the flare. Flares have a short lifetime, don't be too quick to fire them. Another pro tip, countermeasures are fired backwards, so never fly the missile head on, launch countermeasure and expect it to work. Right, so press C to, to select the target. Ready. I've selected chaff by pressing X. He's got locked, missiles incoming. Good, you got your guns back, but I'll need more time to get your missiles up. If the drone gets behind you, enter decoupled mode to disengage your main engines and allow you to spin your ship around while retaining your original vector. Decoupled mode, right, pressing caps lock will disable your main thruster. So this is like sort of flight assist off. But what it does is, yeah, it keeps you flying in the same direction, yeah? You point the direction you're heading in, you continue to head there. However, you can sort of rotate the ship to fire. It's a pretty advanced technique, this one. I'm surprised they're, they're sort of adding this to the tutorial. It's a great way to dissuade your pursuer, but make sure you've checked your path ahead first. Give it a try. Just remember to disengage when you're done. Right, so I've just tried it. Yeah. I'm not sure I'll be using that one now. Now, the combat is completely different from Elite, yeah? It's much more like... Uh, what was the one that I, I did a video on? Star Conflict, yeah? Which is a really fun game. So this feels more arcadey, which is kind of strange because it's probably more realistic <laughs> than Elite, yeah? But it does feel a little bit more arcadey. There's no getting away from that. And also, given... That was a bit sneaky. I completely forgot what I was saying there. Oh yeah, about the flight mode and stuff. It's, it's just different, yeah? You'll get used to it. But, I strongly suspect, right now, the mouse... I mean, this kind of accuracy? With a joystick? I don't think so. So again, I'm going to select by pressing Y. On me, rookie. I'm coming. He's really quite impatient, this guy. You did good back there, kid. Let me guess, you're an arena commander fan. <laughs> no. I'm just getting better. This is the third time I've done this now. Last time I was terrible, it was just awful. So we're heading into land. This should be close enough. Right, so to toggle your ship's landing system on and off, press N. Just your landing gear, I guess. Once engaged, any available landing zones within radar range will display as radar contacts with the nearest automatically coming focused, okay? So you can't lock and fire missiles when you've got your landing system engaged, okay? I'm gonna press N. Once landing mode's active, your HUD's gonna swap out your combat systems for landing-specific functionality. You can cycle through available landing pads the same as cycling through targets. 
Right, so basically Y, yeah? Or to focus on the nearest press C. That seems a bit better, focusing on the nearest one. Once you've targeted a landing pad, request permission to land. Which is again the middle mouse button. Go ahead and pick a landing pad. I just did. The radar is replaced by the landing system. It'll guide you to your pad and help you perform a safe landing. You can use the automatic ETL landing procedure or do the whole thing manually. Right, so once you've engaged the landing system, you can do it automatically if you want, which <laughs> I strongly suspect most people will use by pressing M. However, because it's a tutorial, we're going to land manually. This will catch you and set you down safely, though not as quickly as if you were to master a manual landing. Make sure your ship stays within the bounds of the pad and keep your eye on your pitch and roll. Yeah, your ship's very nimble. You start, stop very quickly. Again, though, you can straight forward. Whoa, control W. And then, straight down with F. Not bad. You'll get the hang of it. While we're waiting, feel free to take a look at your ship setup. Right, so pressing home will allow you to interact with the HUD by bringing up a cursor allowing you to select specific components. You can navigate the HUD using up arrow and select with return. So you've got four different information panes, yeah? Overview, weapons, power and shield. This is something that I'm probably going to put onto voice attack, yeah? So instead of pressing home, I'll have a heads up command or HUD command, yeah, voice command. That seems a smart way to do this. The overview pane gives you a general overview. This is the default one, yeah. So the, the thing on the left that you see, you can see the ship and the shields around it. And it shows you the, the ship's hard points, yeah. So those scorpion things and the bulldog repeater. All my weapons, basically, yeah. The weapons pane gives you the ability to assign weapons into groups. So different fire groups and that's F2. The power pane gives you the ability to alter your ship's total power distribution as well as distribution to individual components and groups. So you, you can basically choose to reduce your power totally and maybe makes you a bit more stealthy, yeah? It says that it will drastically reduce your electromagnetic signature but leave you vulnerable, yeah? So you're basically trading stealth for, for stronger shields. <laughs> it's pretty much what you'd expect. Quite interesting way to do it though, I think. It'll be interesting to have a closer look at that one. So that's F3. You can reset by holding down zero on the keyboard if you decide you've you messed up a bit. And the shield pane gives you the ability to allocate more power to specific shields at the expense of other shields. We talked about that one before. And that's F4. In there you'll see your weapon groups, shield configuration and power distribution. Now wouldn't mess around with them during training. No, I'm not gonna. However, if you press home, right, let's have a look. You can use the arrow keys to move up and down, yeah? So, yeah, you can press the return key to select, I think. Or turn them on and off. <laughs> Let's keep my weapons on just in case. Now, F2, like we said, that's your weapons. Again, I'll have a proper look at this in another video. There's your power. You can actually move the mouse when you've got this up as well, yeah? So you can select it where you want to put it. <laughs> it's a rather jerky mouse motion, though I'm not quite sure what's up with that. There you go. Right. If you just hold your mouse over it and hold down the left button and pull down, you do less power. Push it upward for more. Now if you press the home key, it's gonna stay on that HUD. Topped off. Let's get back out there. Take off when you're ready. I'm gonna put it back onto overview while flying. Right, so that's us refueled. Right, so we're going to take off again. Think you can stay on my tail? If you need to get up to top speed in a hurry, try boosting. Boosting. To overpower your ship's thrusters, hold left shift. So that's going to increase my acceleration, but it has got no real effect once you're at top speed. And you can also use it to achieve tighter turns, yeah? So if you boost while turning, you're going to get a tighter turn. It's, you can only boost a limited amount of times, or not so much a limited amount of times, but you can't constantly boost, yeah? The reason it gives is it uses up fuel, but you do retrieve more fuel from flying around. It's a little bit arcadey, but, you know, you've got to have stuff like this for in these kind of games, yeah? Keep up, kid. You're blowing it. No, I'm not. You can also use it to overpower your maneuvering thrusters in order to take tighter corners. Right, so there are multiple ways to perform a sharp turn. 
You can hold down boost and overpower your manoeuvring thrusters. Just make sure you're pointing in the direction you want to go before you boost. Another method is to hold down the space brake to reduce your throttle, then release it. Yeah, so it's sort of like a kind of opposite. And there's another, the most difficult technique to perform well is engage decoupled mode. So you do that, then you turn your ship sharply, and then you disable decoupled mode again. So that's more like a toggle as opposed to holding down. It kind of makes sense, yeah? I mean, it'll be interesting to see which one is actually the best one. But if it's a simple case of <laughs> no space break or boost, they'll probably use that a bit more unless the decoupled mode gives some kind of obvious advantage. You do have a limited amount that takes time to replenish, so don't go nuts with it. If you need to cut your speed in a hurry, use your space break. It's much quicker than dialing back your engines, and the moment you let go of it, you'll automatically accelerate back up to your previous speed. Right, so that's space bar. Maybe try that one. Let's go, let's go. I'm falling so space bar here. to turn you. Yeah. You you could use that in conjunction with boost. Think you can put all this together? Let's see. You're gonna give up now? Come on, push give yourself. up. I'm giving up. Whoa, it feels like we're going pretty quickly though. <laughs> Still with me, kid? Yeah, Good just job. about. Now, one thing you need to understand every ship's outfitted with systems to look out for you. Nice. That last sharp turn, you probably felt your ship clamp down on the speed. That's your G safe system kicking in, making sure that you aren't taking too many G forces and blacking out. If you need to get that extra edge in turning, you can disable G safe by no. the board. An unconscious pilot turns to a dead one pretty quick. Right, so G safe lets you pull off much tighter turns. I don't really think we need to be pulling off tighter turns. <laughs> I'm not gonna bother with this right now, yeah. This is very advanced, I think. Left control and caps lock. Yeah, I'm not gonna be turning off dangerous G forces. Keep up, kids, you're blowing it. The mouse is very sensitive. Let's go, let's go. I'm falling asleep here. You're gonna give up now? Come on, push yourself! I can't go any bloody quicker! Keep up, kid, you're blowing This it. guy's really annoying. You also have Comstep, which adjusts your forward velocity so you can make controlled turns. Disabling Comstep will allow you to maintain your velocity in turns, but you will drift wider. Right, so Comstab is a system which manages your ship's inertia in turns. Comstab basically keeps you pointing in the right direction, but it does slow you down when turning. Again, pretty advanced maneuver. I'm surprised that they're going over this in the basic flight training. Let's go, let's go. I'm falling asleep here. Think fast. I'm pretty close now, Gilly. Still with me? All right. I'm a little impressed. It's very smart. You're going to give up now? Come on, push yourself. Race you to the spire. I think he had a bit of a lead over me, yeah? Hold on. I've got contacts inbound. Contact. Vandal fighter. Dead ahead. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. All your systems are active. This is a live fire encounter. Mark your target. Right, C to select them. I got the other. Good luck. Gotta be careful of those tons. Right. I think I'm deciding now that I prefer strafe at A and D because I'm not using it at all, really. But I'm using it now, yeah, at Q and D, and it's quite useful. My mouse is very sensitive, though. Let's try zero point one. Struggling to hit this guy. I 
I don't know what's going on with the mouse now, but it doesn't seem anything like as accurate as it was. That's not bad though. Holy crap. Right, so pressing T will allow you to cycle the focus of your targeting system through all enemy radar, right? So it's the same as Y basically, except it's for enemies. So I'm going to press T until I've got the glaive targeted. You're taking a lot of hull damage. There is. Pretty sarcastic as this girly guy. Don't know what's happened to the mouse sensitivity all of a sudden. But I'm constantly overcorrecting. Got a little bit of concentration here. Pretty smart. <sighs> pretty close. It's going to be difficult to decide. I mean, the joystick is going to be so much more immersive, but I don't know how you can really track like this, even though I'm not tracking all that well right now with the mouse. Uh, but with a stick, this is going to be very hard, I think. Nice hits in there. That was interesting. It's, it's very careful not to be caught flying slowly. Sensitivity is just crazy on this. Whoa. You're just so maneuverable as well in this shot. Pretty smart all the same, yeah. I'm gonna try following this guy by pressing M. Now that I'm behind him. There he goes. Yeah, that M key that I mentioned earlier on could be pretty important. I would keybind that to something slightly better than M, I think. Now, you can fire quite a lot, but you can't fire forever. If you do look at the left side, yeah, you can see. The numbers do go down. But it takes a very long time. And obviously there is still ammo, yeah? On on the cannon one, the repeater. Again, pressing M to get on his tail. Once you're on his tail, press M and you can stick to him. Not too difficult. And just a little bit of overcorrecting, which will come to me with a bit more practice, yeah? I started to get it a bit more better towards the end there. <laughs> Hell of a training session, huh? Danger. Radiation critical. 
getting erratic power spikes from your ship. They must have hit your power plant. Your ship's loaded with military intel, so we can't let it fall into enemy hands. You'll have to initiate self-destruct before you eject. Right, so right alt and backspace to self-destruct. Look at the graphics. So right alt and backspace. Right alt and L to eject. There I go. What? Seven seconds left. Let's get you back to base. First round's on me. And that is the basic flight training. It's going to take a bit of practice. I would love to play this with a joystick, but I think they're going to have to change some stuff uh, to make it really viable. But they're working on it all the time. Stuff like keybinds, voice attack, these are all videos coming before too long. Catch you later, guys.